What a move! Oh my gosh, what a move! One. So I know you came for the clutch move, but if you give me a few minutes to build towards it, I guarantee it will be all the sweeter. So this is Nihal Sarin playing white. He's got Hikaru Nakamura with black, and it's in the Speed Chess Championship. Three minutes on the clock, plus one second a move from move one. Let's see what happened. So we see knight f3 on the board. Hikaru copies. Now the pawn comes to c4. This is the English opening. But after e6, knight c3, Hikaru now steers it back into more of a queen's pawn game. So we see pawn e3 played. Hikaru takes the center. And now Nihal captures here. The pawn recaptures. And then he takes some central space as well. So it's more akin to a Tarash opening now. But this bishop is inside the pawn chain not outside so sometimes you see b3 to go like this or we get what we see in the game here so hikaru develops that knight the bishop pins it preparing to castle and now hikaru develops here we see castles and takes on d4 played now as white you can retake with the knight here and keep the superior pawn structure play against this weakened isolated pawn but nihal takes with his pawn also gives himself a slightly worse pawn structure, you could say. But in compensation, he opens up his bishop. So this is what he's playing for. Now we get castles. Both players make some room for the king. The rooks hit this open e-file. And now an interesting decision from Nihal, not forced. So he could actually drop this bishop back as one of the better moves. But he goes bishop takes on c6. He parts with the bishop pair. But what does he get in compensation? Well, he can now land a knight on e5 without the knight pressuring from here. And there's a weak pawn which he can attack. And Hikaru now makes an equally strange decision back. So normally the grandmasters, they love to hold on to their bishops if they can. And so some of the top moves here are say queen c7 or b6. But instead we see the bishop chopping off, pawn recaptures and knight d7. And probably what Hikari was expecting was bishop to f4. Looks really logical. But then you can go knight c5 and it's coming back into e6 where it targets this bishop and can start supporting things like d4, c5, so on and so forth. Quite good for black. But pawn f4 was played by Nihal. Really nice judgment. Because although you open the king, you actually start to make things uncomfortable for black. For example, if you do the same plan, well then you're running into the kind of f5 stuff. So instead, Hikaru, he develops the bishop here. Now, it looks ugly because you're staring at your own pawns, but there's a long-term plan to push these, open up the bishop. And now here, Nihal plays slightly slowly. He goes king to h2. He could have already started there with bishop e3. There's a really thematic idea of knight a4 to c5, supported by the bishop, b4, trying to get a dark squared grip. So Hikari now goes a6, a strange looking move. Now he probably wanted to take control of b5 to then prepare this pawn push and not let the knight jump. But after b4 from Nihal, well he now reneges on that idea and goes pawn to a5. So immediately trying to undermine Nihal's grip on the dark squares. And the best move here is actually pawn b5 to undermine this c6 pawn and therefore get at this pawn on d5. But instead we see captures. The queen takes back. So the knight is attacked and there was a very nice defensive idea here of lifting the rook to e3 and then swinging over here to attack and defend at the same time. But bishop d2, not a bad move. And now here we see a double-edged move from Hikaru of pawn to d4. Why double-edged? Well, you give up this big e4 square, which allows the knight to hop and get really active. But in compensation, Hikaru is preparing to open up his bishop. Now the queen's attacked. It moves into d5, sets up the battery with the bishop, prepares to try and checkmate white. So we see the knight hop into d6, a wonderful octopus outpost. c5 prepares to give checkmate. Queen g4 covers, and it does hit this piece, but it's a fake threat because you have to stay with this pawn now. So Hikaru goes pawn h5, and this is trying to decoy the queen away so you can then deliver mate. But of course Nihal sees it, he goes queen to g3, and now rook e6, a very aggressive move. And you can meet this with knight f5, which is interesting, because if rook g6, then you've got the e7 fork. You actually fought the whole house in that line I've just shown. But instead we see the knight taking on b7, the queen recaptures, 
And the reason Nihal did this, not just because it was a powerful bishop for powerful knight swap, but he then gets to push on with the pawns. Because both of these are defending on e5, it can't be captured, so the rook has to go. But first Hikaru flicks in this h4 move. Again, if the queen captures, well the rook takes here, this is the point. So the queen comes here, stays with the pawn, the rook drops back. And now f6 played. e6 was also good, by the way. But we can see the idea of this one as I'm drawing, trying to make the black king. But an excellent defensive manoeuvre from Hikaru. They say knight on f8, no mate. Especially because it covers the h7 square. Now, if you go queen g5 now, trying to get at the checkmate, well, then there's knight e6. You hit the queen, you cover the square. So instead, Nihal chops off this pawn, but now the knight comes to this square picks up the tempo on the queen, it drops, now queen d5, and it's an important move, because there was a threat to go pawn e6, undermine this pawn here, and then take the knight. So queen d5 covers all of that, plus attacks this pawn. So the bishop defends, and now d3 played by Hikaru, excellent move, looking for counterplay. And this knight's pinned, by the way, you can never take the bishop, or you get mated on g7. So h4 from Nihal, this is his idea, get rid of the knight, checkmate the black king. And a really star move from Hikaru here. So the second best move is pawn d2, Hikaru played the first best. And this looks really scary, but actually after the rook sidesteps, well you're not queening the pawn, and actually it's hard for black to find a move, because this pawn push is coming and then you're getting mated. So the top engine line here is to give up the exchange, and white's doing a bit better. But what we see in the game is not pawn d2, but rook a4. Excellent counter-attack move. However, the knight is pinned. So after pawn h5, you can't hop and take it, which you'd love to do. You have to take with the rook. But then after you take here, now your rook is hanging. And here Hikaru makes a blunder. So his best move was queen to d4. Because you cover this king's escape square and threaten to check here. And because that's such a massive threat, you have to go king h3 and cover the square. And okay, the game is just crazy from here. But what we see in the game was rook to f5. Same idea of delivering the check, but now there's a huge tactic for Nihal. Can you find the absolute clutch move that he finds in this position with 4.2 seconds on his clock? So, the move he played here was the brilliant pawn to e6. I mean, it's not every day you see three pawns like this on the sixth rank. Now, what's the whole idea? Well, if the pawn's captured, then you go f7 check, and you're picking up the rook. This is clearly terrible. Same tactic if you take on g6, you're pushing on with the f7 pawn. Well, what if you take with the rook? The big problem in this line is you leave the back rank and now you're actually getting mated because this pawn takes the escape square from the king. So you can't take with the rook, can't take with the pawn, can't take here. What happens if you take on f6? Well this is even worse because you double check the king, still the rook is dropping. So all of the captures just are not working. So Hikaru checks here, the king drops back and now this check was delivered but the queen blocked and actually Hikaru just cannot do a thing. So in the game, he takes here. Whether he takes off the queens first doesn't make a difference. We'll stick with the game. And now we see the queen captures here. Pawn takes back. This rook got chopped. We see takes, f7 check. And now here's the killer blow, rook to b1 and Hikaru resigns. You can also go to c1. But the point is, you're coming down on the back rank, and this rook can't stop it. So say you go d2, well then we give the check here, the king goes, and we make the queen with check. So there's no time to ever queen this pawn. Hikaru is always a tempo short. If you want to see a fascinating, exceptional Magnus Carlsen game from this same tournament, then check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.